What's good, peeps? Thanks as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. Don't forget as well, please, to like and share the videos. Thank you to everyone that continues um, to do that. You can also support the channel as well. I do have a Patreon account. The link is in the description. All right, let's do this. Uh, this week in boxing, episode 14, I believe. Um, so many results. Literally, that's just results. And that's not all the results. I don't cover everything. But that's just some of them. Um, let's get straight into it anyway. Let's go over there first. Your call, Bethnal Green, Thursday. Richard Riappol beat Jack Massey to claim uh, the British cruiserweight crown. Um, takes his record to 11-0. and It was a competitive fight. Uh, one judge didn't think so. I think one judge had it 117-110, which was just a joke. Um, I know Richard Riappol's calling for a Lawrence Okolu showdown. But he's um, he's miles away from that, if I'm honest with you, miles away. Um, there are other sort of British cruiserweights he needs to fight first and then the European scene and then maybe if he gets through that, then obviously Lawrence Okolu, who I think will become world champion this year when he takes on Glowacki. So, um, yeah, good win. But I think, um, I, think, I think improvements need to be made. Every time I've seen him fight, I think he looks good, but then seems to get involved in the scrap. So, um, yeah, improvements need to be made. But regardless, he's still unbeaten and he's the British cruiserweight champion. So that needs to be applauded. Uh, also on that card, Luther Clay beat Freddie uh, Kwiti by unanimous decision. He won the WBO Global Welterweight Strap. Don't know what that is. Um, yeah, never heard of that one before, but a good win for him. Takes his record to 12-1. and one. Some other fights on that card, Kieran Conway beat Craig O'Brien and Craig Richards drew with um, Chad uh, Sudden. Um, I'm pretty sure Craig Richards has got a fight coming up for the British light heavyweight title. Could be wrong, but I thought I heard that. Um, let's go over to the States. The Zone and Metron put a card on in Phoenix. Headlined by Danny Jacobs versus Chavez Jr. We're not going to talk about that fight. Um, Jacobs obviously got the decision. Chavez Jr. quit in the corner. Quit, retired, whatever. I don't know. However you want to put it. Um, Callum Smith was ringside, though. And they are trying to make the Danny Jacobs versus Callum Smith fight, which I think is a very, very good fight. Uh, Danny Jacobs obviously will get a world title shot. Callum Smith gets a name. Um, so, great fight for both. Um, I would possibly make Jacobs a favourite in that fight. No, maybe. 50-50 scrap. But yeah, fingers crossed that can get done. Um, if it is, it's going to be in America. So, that's a shame. It would have been good to see Danny Jacobs over here in the UK. But it will be in the States. Uh, also on that card, Julio Cesar Martinez uh, stopped Christopher Rosales in round nine, that fight was for the vacant WBC flyweight strap. Um, I don't know if you guys remember uh, Martinez, but he had that fight with Charlie Edwards over here. I think it was the O2 Arena where he basically beat up Charlie Edwards. But he hit Charlie Edwards when Charlie Edwards was down. Um, so Mauricio Suleiman, who was actually there, waved that fight off or called it a no contest, I think. So Charlie Edwards kept his belt, but he now vacated. He's moving up in weight. And this was for that vacated belt. So a uh, good win. For Martinez, he has had that issue with Clint Boutreau, but we're going to skip over that for now. Morris Hooker returned to action as well. This is his first fight since losing all his straps at 140. He's now moved up to 147, so let's see what he can do there. He got a first-round KO against Uriel Perez. Uh, Liam Smith was on the card as well, beat Roberto Garcia by unanimous decision. What next for Liam Smith? What next? What next? Uh, wins on the card as well for Gabriel Rosado, Josh Kelly, and Daniel Yelisunov. I think that's how he pronounce his name. Um, very good fighter. Very, very good prospect. All right, let's go to the copper box over there. Uh, Danny Dubois headlined against Fujimoto. No surprise in the result. Danny Dubois got a second round uh, KO. We're going to do a separate video about that. He got the WBC silver title. Liam Williams, good win against Alantes Fox. Fifth round stoppage. Um, Frank Warren, in the lead up to this fight, kept on saying this is a final eliminator for Demetrius Andrade's WBO title. The WBO uh, have come back and said it isn't a final eliminator. So I don't know what's going on there. Sonny Edwards beat um, uh, Marcel Braithwaite to become the new British super flyweight champion. Got off the floor, though, um, but won it comfortably in the end. Uh, wins on the card as well for Tommy Fury, uh, Bilal Ali, uh, James Branch as well. A good fight in Australia. I don't know if it was televised, there, but a very, very good fight between Jeff Horn uh, and Michael Zarafa, sorry. Uh, Jeff Horn won it by majority decision. Go and check that fight out if you've not seen it. It was bloody war. Uh, so that's one apiece between those two, I believe. Zarafa won the first fight between them by KO previously. So I wonder if they're going to roll the dice again for a trilogy. Might as well, right? Might as well. That, that fight was at middleweight, by the way. 
I mean, Jeff Horn just keeps on just jumping these weights. Let's not forget he fought Pac-Man and Crawford. What? Crawford fight was a year and a half ago at welterweight. He's now found a middleweight. All right, so the Toyota Arena in California, Jamel Charlo got his WBC belt back, uh, stopping Tony Harrison in the 11th round of this eagerly awaited rematch. Um, very good fight. Tony Harrison got put down in the second round, regrouped, and started to use those long levers, good jab, good shots to the body, um, even a bit of dirty boxing inside. <clears throat> I had him up going into the 11th round, and then he got caught and... I mean, once you get caught and get put down by Charlo, Charlo's a very good finisher. I will say this, though. He got put down. He got up. He got put down again. And I thought the referee should have waved it off then. But then when he got up, the referee stopped it again when he was on the ropes taking a couple of shots. But I thought the punches on the ropes were all being defended. Um, so I was a bit iffy about that stoppage. I think it could have been stopped after the, the second knockdown in the 11th. But... It wasn't. But regardless, um, Charlo uh, gets the victory. No shame for Tony Harrison. Tony Harrison, I mean, there's so many good fights in the 154-pound division. So you kind of wonder what will be next for either man. Um, again, good fights out there. Jackson's out there. Jackson Hurd, they might do that one again. But good fights out there regardless for both. I wonder if Harrison would go to 160. Very big, 154 pounds. Also on that card, F.A. Jagba, the heavyweight that a lot of people are talking about. He beat Iago Kaladze. Uh, fifth round stoppage. Had to get up with his ass though. Got put down in that fight. Interesting. Um, upset. Um, uh, Jack Tapora uh, got beat by Oscar Escandon. Uh, Tapora, 23-0. and 0. Um, So that's quite a big upset. I haven't seen the fight, so I don't know. We got stopped in the first round, I believe. Who else fought on that card? Um, Andre Durrell fought on that card as well. He hasn't fought for nearly two years. He came back and fought on that card. I'm not quite sure what's next for Andre Durrell. Um, that was like a 14-fight card. We're not going to go for all those results. Go and check them out on BoxRec. All right, let's get to the news. Um, Errol Spence, and I might do a separate video about this because I've got a lot to say about it, done his first TV interview yesterday during the Harrison Charlo broadcast. Um, he was interviewed by Brian Kenny. Um, what did you guys make of the interview? don't know if you guys have seen it. He said a few things in there. said he was going to come back May or June. Doesn't want to tune up fight either. Uh, wants to either fight Manny Pacquiao or, or Danny Garcia. Remember, we were supposed to fight Danny Garcia in January. I don't think he sounded right, if I'm honest with you. Um, I get that he probably is, you know, on a few drugs right now. Um, I'm hearing that he's had to put in new dentures or something. So maybe that was the reason. But it didn't seem correct. Go and check out the interview. We'll do a separate video on it. Um, this was announced, um, I think, a couple of days ago, that Jake Paul, uh, brother of Logan Paul, who fought KSI, uh, will fight. Um, so basically, there's another YouTube fight is going to happen, but it's going to be on the undercard of this Miami show, which is headlined by, I think, Tevin Farmer versus Jojo Diaz. Remember, Demetrius Andrade's on this card as well. So another YouTube fight is appearing um, on a major fight card. Um, interesting. Um, so they're not separating them. I think this could be the way to go. I think this could be what they're doing now. Um, again, Jake Paul's a name. I'm not quite sure who the other YouTuber is. I mean, some people will let me know, but... I'm not, I don't know who it is, but yeah, they're having a fight and it's going to be on the undercard, which I guess is better than headlining, right? Didn't White done an interview with Sky Sports the other day, um, listing um, some potential names for his next fight. The names were Alexander Povetkin, Andy Ruiz, Otto Volin, and uh, Manuel Char. I don't know how Manuel Char keeps getting mentioned. Why do fighters keep mentioning Manuel Char? Manuel Char has not fought for nearly two years. I don't know if it's because he's so high up in the WBA rank, as I think it is. I think he's ranked number one, but people need to stop mentioning his fucking name. But of those um, three fights, which ones um, do you like? Povetkin, Ruiz, Volin. I mean, not too upset about any of them, if I'm honest with you. I know people won't say good things about Volin, but I mean, Tyson Fury fought him. And if the lineal champ can fight him, Anyone can fight him as far as I'm concerned, but I would prefer uh, Povetkin or Ruiz, um, and I would like Povetkin if I wanted to do that. would be a good fight. Uh, Brook is back. Uh, Kel Brook would take on Mark DeLuca February the 8th. Um, yeah, let's move on. All right, some news here about Saudi Arabia. Eddie Hearn has said that it's likely there'll be two fights in Saudi Arabia in 2020 and that the Saudis want Pac-Man versus Mikey Garcia. Obviously, Mikey Garcia has got this fight against Jesse Vargas coming up in February, so it's providing he gets past that one, and that's not easy. In fact, I would favour Vargas in that fight. Amir Khan also said 
this year that um, that the Saudis wanted to see him versus Pac-Man. So it is likely that we will get maybe two or three fights in Saudi Arabia in 2020. And I think it's very likely that all those fights will be, or at least one of those fights will be headlined uh, by Manny Pacquiao. All right, Eddie Hearn has offered Jamal Charlo a one-fight deal to fight under zone, and that is for a fight against Demetrius Andrade. It's got to happen. He has got to take this one-fight deal. Um, I feel that Charlo is losing a bit of his um, bit of his luster. I don't know if that's the right word. And I think this is a fight that just makes so much sense. Let's not forget, Charlo is the WBC middleweight champion. Uh, remember, Canelo has been elevated to franchise champion. Charlo is the WBC champion. Demetrius Andrade is the WBO champion. They hate each other. They've been beefing for the last part of, or the best part of like three or four years. Make this fight happen. I hope that no one at Showtime or PBC or Al Heyman gets involved here and they just make this. It's a one fight deal. Just make it happen. It's a fantastic fight as well. Um, Austin Trout. I think I spoke about this a while back, but it's now been confirmed. Austin Trout will drop down to 147 pounds. Um, yeah, I don't know. But he's called out the likes of obviously Sean Porter, Keith Firm and wants all those fights. I don't know. I don't think he can do anything, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Joshua Pulev looks like it'll be done in April. That's the date we're hearing. There was a lot of talk about March. We're here in April now. Although the WBO don't seem to be letting up on this Usyk thing. The idea was obviously Usyk versus Chisora. Uh, we're here in March. But the WBO were like, nope, we want that fight next. So there is a, a long way to go. But if it does get sorted out, we are here in Chisora, Usyk, March. Joshua Pulev, April. Um, O2 Arena for Chisora, Usyk and Tottenham for uh, Joshua Pulev. All right, this is interesting. I probably should have known this, but I didn't. Wilder Fury, uh, regardless of the outcome of the fight, there will be a trilogy fight in the summer. Didn't know that. I thought there'd only be a trilogy fight if Fury won. I thought if Fury wins, you know, obviously Wilder will have a, a rematch clause in their trilogy fight. But according to Frank Warren, regardless of the outcome, these guys are going to roll the dice again in uh, June or July. Why, I do not know. There are too many other heavyweights now for them to do that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I guess it's easy to say that now that there'll be a trilogy fight. If Wilder stops Fury in the first or second round, there's no trilogy fight. Uh, Josh Taylor was in the news. Not good news as well. Um, according to um, Michael Benson, I think it's been confirmed by a number of sources here. Josh Taylor um, used a bit of a racist slang or a racist slur towards a bouncer. Um, I think it was in Scotland. I don't know what he called him. I think he called him like an orange something. I don't know. Um, I guess that is racist, but uh, not good for Josh Taylor. Um, not good at all. Not good at all. Hopefully he can sort that side of him out. I don't know if he was on a night out having the drink, but no excuses to be using racial slurs. Uh, that's, a, that's a red mark against his name. When I read that, I was like, don't like that kind of stuff. Um, talking about... Boxers doing BS. Um, Broner. Adrian Broner. I tweeted about Broner recently and I said Adrian Broner has had one fight in 2016, one fight in 2017, two fights in 2018 and one fight in 2019. He is fighting court cases more than he's fighting people. Uh, Broner has been charged with assault and various other charges. And um, as a result of this, he has to pay... Um, I think it's a, a female in Cleveland, $865,000 or something like that. I haven't read it properly, but Broner is going to be a sad story, isn't it? It's going to end sad. I'm not saying it's going to end in death or anything, but it's going to end sad. You're going to look at Broner one day and he's going to be, it's Broner's, unless he's got outside interest, like he's invested his money wisely, Broner is definitely going to be broke in 10 years. Like definitely. I mean, you can just see it coming. Um, if anyone can't see that coming, then they haven't seen um, how it works in boxing. Uh, Broner is going to be broke in 10 years and people are, he's going to be looking back, saying he's going to be telling the stories about, oh, this friend done this and this friend done that. And it's him. Uh, Adrian Broner is a problem to himself. He's only 30. He can turn it around. He's only 30, but I don't think he will. Anyway, that is This Week in Boxing. Peace.